The Indian Overseas Trust was formed in 2002 to deal with any matter concerning the Indian diaspora. Post-1997, when uh, the British Ugandan Asian Trust, which was spearheaded by the late great Manubai Madhvani, wound up with the 25th anniversary commemorations, the India Overseas Trust was handed the mantle and we have been carrying that forward since. So we were involved very heavily in the 40th anniversary back in 2012-13. and We hosted um, a service of thanksgiving at Leicester Cathedral uh, and many other events, including uh, at the time what, what certain individuals got together and we uh, put a full-page loyal message of thanks to Her Majesty and Her Majesty's government of the time and the people of the United Kingdom to thank them for honouring their moral and legal pledge to take British Ugandan Asians. We are organising the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the exodus uh, and we have been lucky to receive a grant from the National Laurentiary Heritage Fund specifically about the, the volunteers who assisted during the exodus. I should explain that our chairman, Mr. Pruffel Patel, is the only surviving member of the British government U Ugandan resettlement body and was the only Asian member of the body. So for him, this is a very personal matter. For me, this is a personal matter given that my family are from Uganda, uh, albeit we didn't come over during the exodus. We came before, as many others did. Pruffled by uh, was very active uh, in the UK from the 60s. He was the founding chair of what is now BAPS, the Swami Narayan Mandir, and was very much a Labour Party member at the time and very in involved in immigration and community affairs. So he seemed to be an obvious person to invite as a British Ugandan Asian by the government to sit on the Uganda Resettlement Board to represent the interests of Ugandan Asians. President Amin announced the expulsion on the 4th of August and if you can imagine between the 4th of August and the 18th of September the Uganda Resettlement Board was formed and operational and at the peak a year later there were 16 resettlement and welcoming camps to the United Kingdom. So once uh, the, the remit of the Uganda Resettlement Board was complete, um, and I believe 28,606 evacuees went through resettlement centres, uh, the board was wrapped up, a final report submitted in early 1974, and uh, the camps were closed. Given the current situation, it seems that the Uganda Resettlement Board was ahead of its time. Uh, yes, they did make mistakes, uh, particularly in terms of the food and in the choice of camps, but uh, one has to remember that 50 years ago, this was a very different country. This was, this was the era of Enoch Powell. Many people outside the main metropolitan cities hadn't mixed with non-white people. So for what the board achieved and the resettlement that was achieved, it was quite amazing. My personal opinion is is that I think that there are lots of positive lessons to be learned from the work of the Uganda Resettlement Board, um, specifically the way that volunteers were marshaled, which is the crux of our National Lottery Heritage Fund project. Um, and, and to think that uh, 16 camps and just under 29,000 people went through those camps in the, in the space of less than 18 months, and they were staffed by some 63 voluntary organizations from across the board. It definitely worked, and there are definitely lessons to learn, and it was definitely cost-effective, and it did the job. One of the things that we've seen in this 75th year of partition and the independence of India and Pakistan is that, that human memory is only so long. There is the feeling that at 75 years, they've lost a lot of first-hand recollections. So at 50 years, we, we're seeing that we still have volunteers alive, we still have adults alive who came here 50 years ago. So for us, this is a priority to do this now before we lose that first-hand oral knowledge. I think that the, the Uganda exodus is, is, is a subject that generally has not been talked about, more so by the community, the exodees, the people resettled themselves than anybody else because of the very painful memories. Uh, 
I mean, I remember in my family, Uganda, my grandfather always said that, forget that we were ever in Uganda. You are now British. You live here. It's not that it has been forgotten, but it has been unspoken, the whole subject area, as a way of dealing with the trauma or the pain. And at the 50th anniversary, hopefully there has been healing, but at this juncture we feel it's really critically important that those experiences, many of which are being retold or recounted for the first time, are saved for future generations so they're there and they're not completely lost. My message to all of those people, all classes and cultures from Virginia Bottomley and Sir Peter Bottomley who hosted British Uganda and Asian in their family down to a police cadet in Stradishall is really on behalf of the community thank you so very much for your humanity. The situation in itself was created as a result of the colonial legacy this uh, strange situation where a government in this case the government of the United Kingdom had issued passports to people who had no right to come and live in the United Kingdom. So in that situation a wrong was corrected, um, uh, a moral, certainly a moral, but also possibly a, a, a legal um, requirement was honoured and the British government honoured and accepted the British Ugandan Asians, as well as many other Ugandan Asians in subsequent announcements by the Amin government who were rendered stateless to come and resettle in the United Kingdom. What is often said is, is you know, that, that Idi Amin did us a favour. He might have done some of us a favour, but this is not a way that I would like him to be remembered. This was a forced expulsion that, that happened literally overnight. It has affected people in different ways. This happened 50 years ago. This is still now very current. It will happen again, unfortunately, because of human nature. Let us learn from the good things that have happened, the good examples that have been set, and let's move forward and continue in that same vein of humanity. I think we forget history at our own peril, and this is exactly one of those situations. Uh, the history of the Ugandan expulsion is now at that point where it has largely been forgotten. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised that a lot of people, including the younger generations of my family, don't really know or understand who Idi Amin was, let alone the Ugandan expulsion and the details of how people left Uganda and where they ended up around the world. We, ha we, we cannot forget our history and we, uh, and we must record it so that we can learn from it. Most important that for my children and generations to come, that they know how we came to this country, why we came to this country. Any cost attached to the British Ugandan Asians coming to this country has far been outweighed by the contribution of the British Ugandan Asian community. Let's not stereotype that all British Ugandan Asians came to this country as penniless refugees and started corner shops and became doctors and accountants and pharmacists. Many of them did, but British, the British Ugandan Asian community has contributed to the depth and breadth of British society from the arts through to politics, culture, science, etc. Not just business and the entrepreneurial successes.